Good evening and welcome to what we hope will be a meaningful and fun hour together. As David said, I'm Marjorie Getz, co-director of Narrative Medicine um, at Advocate Aurora Health. And I'm the clinician, as I said, in developmental and behavioral pediatrics at Advocate Children's Hospital. Um, our Narrative Medicine group, we're so lucky. We've partnered with the Art Institute of Chicago and we are so happy that you can join us for this event. Thank you to Sam for spending the evening with us. A little word about Narrative Medicine Initiative. Uh, David and I established the program in 2013 and it's grown exponentially since then. Uh, we will have information throughout the evening in the chat if you are interested in joining us. We hope you will join us. Um, we also have a Facebook page and group. And here's the mission statement that we came up with um, because this is what we do. Uh, we tell stories, listen closely, and share to facilitate healing, rehumanize healthcare, and increase our capacity for empathy and self-reflection. We practice learning how to tell our stories and receive other people's stories. We practice this by close reading, close listening, and close looking. Thank you for helping us on this mission. Together, we are all partners. I'd like to introduce my partner, in narrative medicine and my very dear friend, David Tholey, pediatric cardiologist, who is gonna tell us about the program tonight. Great, well, thank you so much, Margie. And of course you've had to already listen to me, but anyway, you get to listen to me again briefly and then I'll be off the program. Thank goodness um, for uh, most of you. Um, but hello and welcome to all of you who are here. Uh, the event tonight will follow the structure of our uh, regular meetings, which we meet twice a month. And in our meetings, we start with a welcome which is pretty obvious. Um, that's the welcome now. And then an opening meditation to lead us into the hour. Then there's a writing prompt. We write, we share in breakout rooms, and then in the large group. And that's one of the amazing things is that in this kind of impersonal thing of Zoom, it ends up being very personal. I, I hope you enjoy it as, as uh, you have the same experience that I have. Um, and, and then we'll have a chance to share in the larger group. And then we're going to be led out of the hour in a closing meditation. And our meditations today will be led by two members of our group we are really fortunate to have who happen to be talented music therapists. And we will be guided in the writing exercise by Sam Ramos, who is the Associate Director of Innovation and Creativity um, in the Department of Learning and uh, Public Engagement at the Art Institute of Chicago. And uh, I'm gonna go over the, uh, the norms now. So we talk about just sort of the, the ground rules for, for this whole writing experience. So we're we're here in this moment to hold space for one another and for that space to be a safe space. Uh, we covenant to respect confidentiality and when requested, when requested, and in all cases, follow these principles. So number one is to listen. Um, doctors are not very good at that. So, but here we try to listen without judgment, um, assumptions, solutions, or conclusions. Uh, second thing is we affirm. So we can summarize what the sharer highlighted. So it's fine to say, oh, that sounds like you said that. Um, so you know, we affirm, say, wow, that really touched me or something. And then we reflect by asking open-ended questions. Uh, for the breakout rooms, um, we're gonna be sharing for 10 minutes and we'll have a chance, chance to share uh, according to alphabetical order um, of first name with an option to pass. So uh, you look, you say what your first name. So when you're in the sharing part, we ask you to, to put your camera on and make sure you're unmuted so that you can talk with each other and you figure out who has the, so if, in other words, if your name is, Alvin Ardvark, you're probably the first one to go. And if you're Zelda, um, whatever, uh, zebra, then, then you're gonna be the last one. So the fir by first name, alphabetical. And um, when we go back to the large group, uh, either use your hand raise feature uh, or put something in the chat and say, I want, I'd like to share something. You'll, you'll, you'll figure out that this is the time you don't have to share, but if someone wants to share um, or you wanna talk about what your experience was in your group, that's the kind of thing that we do. So in both spaces, it's an opportunity for sharing and listening. Uh, at, and at this point, it's my honor to introduce you to Victoria, who will lead us in the opening meditation. Hello, everybody. I'm Victoria. I'm the music therapist at Advocate Children's Hospital in Park Ridge. Um, I thought we could start tonight with some music listening and community art making. Um, as a way to center us and welcome us into this hour together. So I'm going to share my screen and walk you through an exercise. 
So you should see testing, testing, one, two, three. And at the top of your screen, um, click view options and then annotate. Once you've done that, you'll see a new bar pop up and I'd like you to click the stamp button. Um, pick a stamp that you like particularly tonight and try stamping it around the white space. Excellent. Okay, great. Beautiful. Next up, um, if you click on format and pick a color that you like, and then um, hit the draw feature and try drawing on the space. Okay. And then last step, if you hit the text button and um, type in maybe one word to describe how you're feeling right now. I see chill, tired, a bunch of happies. Someone feels ready, relaxed. Okay, great. So now you know the skill for the opening meditation. Let's see here. All right, I'm going to clear us and go to the next slide. Okay, so what we're going to do is listen to a piece of music. And as we're listening, um, use those three features that you just learned about to um, maybe put a stamp next to a particular line that is resonating with you. You can draw um, if you have some images come to mind or underline words that stand out. Um, and if you wanna use the text feature, I thought maybe if you have a word that is, is coming to mind or maybe a memory that you're thinking of as you're listening. Um, and the goal is to fill the white space and to make art together as we listen. Um, so I'm gonna get us started here. I'm gonna clear one more time. And here we go. It's about five minutes. I see trees of green and red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white The bright blessed day dark sacred night and I think to myself what a wonderful world
colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky and also other faces of all the people going by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. Watch them grow. They'll know much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, self, what a wonderful world. That's beautiful. Okay. Just take a moment to look at this piece of art that we made together, despite being so far from each other. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Victoria. And um, that was a great way to start the evening. And um, that brings us to our next and our feature speaker here, who you've been hearing a lot about, and he's a great guy. Um, and uh, I'm going to introduce, uh, so here's Sam. So take it away, Sam. Yes, hello, everyone. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone else. Thank you, Victoria. That was, this is the second time I've seen that in action, and it's just it as amazing. So really appreciate it. Um, I'm taking a moment right now just to share my screen. So I've got a few images that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so um, I've selected just really briefly a, co a couple of different artworks, a handful of different artworks that to me spoke to this concept of community and what we're going to be reflecting on today. And of course, the Art Institute and just art in general is just full of different ways of thinking about these ideas. And these are just a few. And so um, uh, we may be talking for about the next 30, 45 minutes or so, um, and we're going to dig in. Um, but of course, this is just the beginning of a conversation or the continuation of a conversation that will you know, last the rest of our lives for each of us as we think about what community means and its uh, impact. Um, I wanted to start with this one. Now, whenever we started talking about the concept of community, this one came to mind for me right away. If you've been to the museum, you may remember it. It's really one of our, our very iconic works. Um, um, it's called Nightlife by a African-American artist, a Chicago artist named Archibald Motley Jr. Um, and uh, I want to start the conversation just real briefly by inviting you to use the chat um, to uh, write down any reactions you may have um, just off the bat to this artwork. What are some words that come to mind? What are some emotions that come to mind? What are some things that you're observing in the image? Um, and uh, I have a couple of close-ups as well that I'm going to um, slide through while we're talking. But as we're talking, you can please, please feel free to note those observations um, in the chat and uh, we'll all kind of benefit from each other's um, observations. I do see fun for sure. And, um, and there is a purple flow, which is a really nice phrase uh, to describe this image. Lots of movement and camaraderie and celebration, action for sure. These are some really great responses to this image. And while you're sharing those, I'm going to go ahead and jump to just a handful of close-ups here. 
Um, this image is full of stories. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of different ones that could, that could be pulled out. These are just some that always tend to catch my attention uh, whenever I'm looking at this image. Um, on the left here, the, the one of the bartenders in the back and on the right, maybe my favorite figure in the entire painting, this guy who, uh, even though everyone's having a great time, he seems like maybe he's had just a little bit too much possibly, um, and he's on his way out for the evening, but um, he's there anyway, and he's part of the community as well. Um, and then just a couple more here. I do see this this really lovely thought from um, Hetty brings yearning in for, nor uh, for normality, um, given we've not done just through the pandemic, the memories of what was, absolutely. I mean, I know I haven't been in a space like this, um, even with vaccinations and everything, I haven't gotten back to that yet. Um, and uh, maybe a lot of us haven't quite gotten back that, that uh, sense of uh, comfort in being in, in a close space like this. I wonder also, um, we talked about observations, um, some of the things that maybe you might feel physically or smell um, or hear whenever you're um, in an image like this. Someone says they miss dancing and um, that's being especially able to dance in a community um, at a wedding or, or at a club or, or whatever for sure. Um, this is one of my favorite sort of pairings here. When we uh, look at the image, you see the man on the left who um, uh, one speculation that um, our historian wrote was that um, they thought the person on the left was uh, flirting with the woman who's dancing on the right and trying to kind of gesture um, at her and maybe the man that she's dancing with doesn't know, but there's these little, then the woman in the green is watching him. So there's a lot of this little sort of playful and kind of mysterious action happening um, in the crowd. And then we can see the full image here, of course. And now I don't miss the, uh, the smell of smoke inside um, bars either myself. Um, so I agree with that one. Laughter for sure. And then music, probably this is the early 40s. So probably um, this would have been like big band or jazz as Jim just noted there. Um, and probably screaming. Um, there's, as you see in the background, you see people um, dancing off in that really bright sort of neon purple light. Um, so a lot of really fun things happening in here. And uh, just a couple more things I would um, point out, um, more specifically um, the clock. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed yet, this small detail up on the top left of the image um, says it's approximately moving on to 1 a.m. So this is definitely late at night. Um, and then also just, um, you know, we talked about the gentleman smoking a cigarette who maybe um, is not having such a great night sitting at the table. But then I also like to point out the people who are behind the counter there who are working. Um, the bartender, um, who I had a close-up of earlier, who's probably exhausted, possibly ready to kind of go home. He's seen this, you know, every night, and but he's also just a really crucial um, part of this uh, community. And I think somebody in a conversation with me around this image at one point mentioned, you know, the concept of an essential worker, which of course so many of you are very familiar with. And those are the people who are beside, behind the scenes and making things go, and they're there every day getting it done. Um, while everyone else is sort of is, um, you know, kind of involved in their own lives and their own stories, but very important uh, members of the community as well. So, as I said, a lot more to say about that image for sure, but I wanted to bring in um, one more before we get into our writing exercise. Um, this is um, an image you can see Husking Bee, Island of Nantucket, um, uh, painted in 1876. And so again, I'd like to invite you, if you've got observations, you know, what are you seeing here? Um, what are some maybe colors or stories or, or feelings or moods um, that you maybe see in this image? And, um, and uh, feel free, feel encouraged to enter those in the chat um, and we'll all um, be able to kind of benefit from those. Community, absolutely, right on Beth. Um, this is, you know, a village of people, um, not just the people who are living in, you know, probably those buildings you see nearby, but um, historically, uh, people would come from, you know, a, a lot of near neighboring um, uh, villages or homes to one place, and then they would have this husking, um, as uh, Al points out, working together and this work cooperating together, doing some hard work. Um, Dishma has this really um, um, interesting observation, the word loss, which I think is really compelling as associated with this image um, and different ages for sure. So I have a couple of um, close ups. Again, this is my favorite detail of this image. I think this, the little narrative here, Chris, just like with the last painting, the last image, you have a lot of different people together. You have a lot of different kinds of relationships and a lot of different interactions happening all at once. Maybe you just like with the last one, you can imagine being able to hear a lot of chatter and people talking and laughing, um, the sound of corn being husked. Um, in this case, this, the anecdote is um, that uh, 
whenever somebody uh, would find the red ear of corn, they were, um, I've had it a couple of different ways. Either they were allowed to kiss somebody, like they could sort of sneak, uh, steal a kiss from somebody nearby, or somebody could come up and run and kiss them and sort of like steal a kiss from them. So in either way, you see somebody has just found the red ear of corn and there's some like um, kiss stealing happening right there. Um, then the woman standing by kind of watching and, you know, maybe curious about it or laughing or amused, who knows, but, and then I love this little um, image as well. Um, I like the word intimacy um, also that we have so many different people, but there is a sense and experience of intimacy you see the people in the background who are trying to prepare a feast. You see these two people in the foreground. It's a little hard to see here, but they're carrying something together. So just more examples of people working together to kind of make this community run. And somebody mentioned the different ages. So you do have younger people and, and you have older people and um, um, as well. And a little bit more here. And, you know, you can see, I mean, some of the mood and feeling around this image is is generated by these very kind of loose and quick brush strokes that are happening here. So some people, as you get further and further back of the image, you see are really just sort of smears and quick passes of color um, that give you a sense of people um, in the space. And here's your close up or your, uh, your wide view once again of the entire image. Um, so for the sake of time, um, I want to go ahead and, you know, this is a really quick sort of warm up introduction to a couple of different artworks that introduce us or help us think about the concept of community and being together in very different contexts and very different ways. Um, the last thing I'd say about this image here is that it's um, even at the time in 1876 when Eastman Johnson, Johnson painted it. He was painting a uh, an event that was no longer really happening very much. And so it was an event that people were already nostalgic for. It was part of the past. So change and transition had happened, you know, of course, much like the last year. Um, things are no longer the same. Things had been lost. Somebody mentioned loss earlier. And Eastman Johnson was trying to capture something from memory, from imagination, and from stories so that people could maintain this sense of community by looking at an image, even if that community was no longer gathering in the same way. Um, so with that, I want to introduce um, the writing prompt. And go ahead and let everyone get started. Um, I'm thinking about that and starting to reflect a little bit on your own um, experience. So the prompt that I want to share, you're going to have 10 minutes um, to think about it and write um, on your own, um, is the following. How has the past year or so impacted your idea of community? So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. How has the past year impacted your idea of community? So I, I want to go ahead and invite you to turn off your cameras if you'd like, if that sort of helps you um, focus and think and sort of let everybody go off into their own space for the next 10 minutes or so um, and write and think about that prompt. And you can write about it in whatever way you please, full sentences, lists, um, just sort of free verse, whatever you like, whatever feels comfortable. And then we'll return and we'll have an opportunity to share with one another. So we'll go ahead and start that 10 minutes of writing now. Okay, so thank you all for that. I hope that you stumbled on some surprising things. I did um, when I was trying to reflect a bit and put some words on paper. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and take um, another 10 minutes or so and it, it will find, I'm sure, this is often how it goes, that it won't feel like enough. So I want to go ahead and jump into it, uh, into our in 10 minutes to talk in small groups um, together. And as uh, Dr. Tholey said um, earlier, uh, we encourage you to share um, according to alphabetical order. Um, if that feels comfortable for you, you can pass if you don't feel comfortable sharing. You can read everything that you wrote, or you can read a part of what you wrote, or you can just kind of reflect on what you were thinking and what you wrote. So whatever feels comfortable for you to kind of have a conversation that you want to have as a, as a small group. Um, so we're going to, as I said, give you about 10 minutes. Um, and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and send you into those groups of four people per group um, now.
All right, welcome back everyone. People are gonna be drifting back in for a couple of few seconds here, I think, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again, just for a few, just for like another minute or two, um, because uh, I have just a handful of more artworks to share. Um, I had a really great conversation with my group. I hope that you all did um, as well. Um, really powerful, just just like all of these meetings that I've attended, I hope that, that um, some of you had similar experiences. Um, but we'll have a chance to kind of unpack that together um, in uh, just a minute. But in order to sort of like help with our thinking, I, have, I wanted to share just quickly a couple of more artworks that um, I didn't have time to spend more time with, but I thought that I could at least sort of like give you a quick kind of dip into as we we're having this conversation for the last few minutes. So just real briefly, this is a photograph by a Chicago artist named Mickey Farrell of a um, space that used to regenerate every Sunday called the garage. And people would come together and they would just do what you see here. They would dance, they would have DJ sort of spin-offs and they would um, just talk and flirt and um, just have a great time. I always love to bookend this and, and include it with conversations um, about, uh, along with the Archibald Motley, the nightlife and mystery we looked at first. Um, just so much great energy and Mickey Farrell herself was a part of this community to the extent that they called her the picture taking lady and that uh, she would give her own photos back to the uh, garage. And sometimes in some of their photographs, you can see her own images on the walls um, in the background. So um, really fantastic Chicago um, um, artist uh, with these uh, documentations of this beautiful space. Um, something quite different um, from the Republic of the Congo. This is uh, called the Ninkizi Nkondi uh, figure. And just Real basically what you have is an object that basically like a shaman or spiritual leader would have created um, by an artist. Um, and then people would come and they would request things. Basically the figure was um, embodied a spirit, a helpful spirit of some kind. There was a sort of ceremony and rituals that would take place. And the shaman would take um, objects, herbs, different kinds of plants, things like that, depending on what kind of spirit he wanted to connect with and put it in that little box on his chest. Um, and then all of a sudden he's imbued with this spirit strength. Um, and then people would come and they would um, have problems and questions and they would talk to the spirit. And then the, they would sort of make a promise with the spirit by nailing something, an object into the figure. And so each one of these little objects, you see the nails, um, the feathers, all of that um, represents some somebody's promise or somebody's oath or somebody's problem or somebody's story in that community back then. So you have a collection of these relics and documents of this community and its, um, and its experience. Um, this uh, is a large image, just real quickly, I could say a lot about it, but essentially the artist Lorito Taft wanted to express the sort of loneliness of the individual human experience, but also our connectedness. So to capture the concept of being alone together, which is why this is a big sculpture that you can walk all the way around. And you can see everybody looks so really full of sorrow and they're lamenting, but all of them are in human contact with somebody right next to them. Um, so it's just a very lovely idea captured in this image. Um, this is a page from an antiphonary, which um, in the medieval period um, would be used uh, by a choir, it's very big. Um, we have one on display in the Art Institute and the choir would open it up in front of them and they'd all read it and sing from it together. Um, so not only this group looking at sharing one object, this community sharing this object, but also using music to kind of bond this um, community around the church and around God um, together. So um, really beautiful um, concept and a really um, kind of dazzling object when you can see it up close for sure. And then finally, another um, Chicago uh, artist and a Chicago um, um, image, a Chicago story. This is an image of the Wall of Respect. This is a painting of the Wall of Respect, um, which was on the south side of Chicago um, for a couple of years in the late 60s. And then it burned down the building that it's on. It's a mural. And it was um, a Black community. Um, it still is. Um, and a lot of different artists and people in the community got together to uh, make images of people, heroes that they considered iconic and that they felt represented by. And so you see people like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali and others. Um, and uh, people were very proud of it. It was a place of protest, a place of gathering. Um, and then it burned down, but it lives on in memory and still considered a very powerful um, artwork that even though it no longer exists, um, says a lot about the community, the Southside community of Chicago. So I'll go ahead and stop there. 
And we want to take just a few minutes. Um, uh, let's say I want to be respectful of time. So it may, maybe just a, um, about five minutes or so to just share some of the things you talked about in the group, some of the things you wrote about, just some of the things that are on your mind. And you can feel free to put those thoughts in the chat, or if you feel like more comfortable just speaking, you can use the uh, raise hand feature um, on your Zoom platform. If you're not sure where that is, it's at the bottom of your Zoom screen under reactions, and you'll see raise hand, and then we'll see you there, and we'll be able to, to ask you to, um, to go ahead and speak up. So please feel free to, um, to share as you wish. I see Monster Roll, you've got your hand raised. Um, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and share your thoughts. Yeah, basically to me, I was sharing with Sam and others is uh, last year gives me this concept of pain, pain of separation. And I liken this that, well, it's kind of, if you push it to the extreme, that is death is also a pain of separation. It's a separation happens. So it yeah. suddenly it happened that my community is lost, my family is lost. And uh, the next thing is, because we are always optimistic, that's why the life continues. And, and that is, the when can we get back? And I still do not see something really, uh, I would say, clear path to it. And, uh, but uh, I was also sharing with my group that one good thing happened if, if the, the bad thing has some good thing and the good thing happened is that we know that we are so vulnerable, something that we even cannot see with a microscope uh, are killing us. And then at the same time, the flip side is that it's just miracle that we are living. So we are, uh, if, if, we, if we look at this very clearly, I mean, that is what I see. Thank you, Monster. Well, that was, I, I, you know, I think that's something that I sensed. We were in a, in a group together, and I think it, one thing that I sensed in a lot of our kind of responses, including my own, is the sense of um, uh, devastation and loss, and then also promise, and how something is traumatic um, as the past year um, can elicit really strong experiences and emotions on both sides. I don't know if people had other people had similar reflections or similar conversations, but that's that's something that I certainly sensed as well. And I see, you know, Charles is noted, noting in the in the chat here that the community has been damaged and will it be restored? And who knows? And it's painstakingly slow living through historic times and events. And we talked about the duration of the, the pandemic as well and the impact of duration. It's not a single day, a single event. It's an ongoing event that we're still in. And, and um, you know, how does that change someone over time and change the way you think and change who you are and of course change our community as well? Yeah, the global community, absolutely. Uh, Gishma, I see your hand raised. Please feel free to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, for, for me, it almost felt like there wasn't um, a separation anymore. Um, you know, my race didn't matter, my gender didn't matter, my religion didn't matter, my disability didn't matter. All of these identities obviously are puzzle pieces uh, that make me, me, but at the same time, uh, the greater umbrella of humanity, you know, connected me to everybody that I was walking down the street with, um, everybody that I saw for one minute and then they were gone forever the next. So I, I don't know if I, take, I took it for granted before that I was only gonna see the stranger for a minute of my life. But now when I see a stranger, I, I almost um, you know, just recognize their existence and I pay more attention if that makes more sense. It makes me think of those early moments uh, of the pandemic when it really sort of struck, um, at least in the communities I was in, where you, everybody knew that we were having similar thoughts as we we're walking down the street and those moments of kind of recognition and acknowledgement. Um, we have about one minute, I think, before we transition into our sort of concluding meditation. Um, if, and we continue to, to sit with the chat, it's wonderful. There's some really beautiful thoughts being placed there. Um, and But if if one more person wants to unmute yourself and speak, please feel free to, to raise your hand. 
I would agree, Julia. I thought the Peachman's um, um, articulation of those that experience is really lovely. And gratitude for life. I mean, as most rule was talking about, the kind of miracle of life. There's you know so much loss, and the, the sort of the gratitude we have to feel that that we're alive at all, and, and that we all happen to be alive together right now at this moment. Um, well, I. I really appreciate all the thoughts, um, the comments in the chat, and then um, those who spoke out loud um, and, and meeting yourself and sharing your thoughts. I um, really appreciate that. I want to go ahead and um, move to our concluding meditation um, uh, and hand things over to um, Susie Cotter Shoypoli, um, who will um, wrap things up for us in the last few minutes here. dawned on me, Sam, um, that you have provided a big picture, um, but it's not the whole picture. And the comments by everyone, we're all kind of individuals, but together as a world community. And the music that we share, and the art that we share, can strengthen us. Our narrative community meetings always include a concluding song or poem for a few moments of reflection. And the improvisation that I'm playing for you this evening draws upon a piece of music that you may recognize Mazorsky's Pictures of an Exhibition. It dawns on me too, this song is, this piece of music is over 150 years old. shared tonight. Perhaps a part of a picture. Perhaps the big picture. Perhaps someone, someone's words. Sending it inwardly by inhaling that deep breath, exhaling it 
and releasing it to become what it will. In doing so, we create a wonderful world. Breathing in that wonderful world and breathing out that wonderful world that we can create every day in little bitty, tiny picture ways to create the big picture. David Tolley is going to uh, conclude our time together and, uh, and share a little bit more about narrative medicine. Thank you so much for being with us this evening and making our world wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Susie, and thank you all for being here. Um, we really are glad that we had a chance to introduce you, or if you've been here before, to welcome you back to our group. And uh, if you like what you had, saw tonight, um, there's information in the chat and in, in how to, if you'd like to get on our mailing list, we'd love to have you join us. We meet on the first and the third Tuesday of every month from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time, since we have people in different time zones. Um, so it's tough for the people on the West Coast or in Australia, but um, it's uh, not so bad for other people. Anyway, um, that's that's about all we have. I'm going to stay on for a few minutes, um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I feel a lot calmer now than I did at the beginning. I, I get nervous for these things a little bit. But anyway, um, uh, we'll we'll stay on and feel free to unmute yourself and we'll have a messy chat here. Um, and uh, you no, know, thanks. Thanks to everyone for uh, for being here tonight. Hope you have a have a good evening and um, have a great rest of your week. <laughs>